thought tonight I would talk about Jesus Christ, the great physician. Take something simple and let's handle it and see if we can get anything out of it. If we need, if we ever needed this great physician at any age of the world, it is now. The whole world is sick. Everybody's sick. Sin sick. And they need a physician. And I'm going to the Bible and get you several prescriptions that Jesus wrote while he was here or made or used and see if we can get a cure tonight. Last night, a young man came right on out of the Baptist church, was baptized into the Church of Christ because he took one of these prescriptions and obeyed it last night and walked out and confessed Christ. And then he fully complied with that prescription. He come out of the water another man. Another man, and not only that, after he come out of the water, according to God's divine prescription, he's now walking in a church he never was in before. It's one thing makes me proud of Sister Goff. When she come to us, she's a Baptist, a student, a husband registered her in the school, walked in, a great preacher in Nashville, he was before he passed, recognized by anybody or everybody is a great preacher. But do you know tonight she sits here in Christ? In Christ, she had courage. He, en he enrolled her in the school, brought her in just like she's a little good, and she was just as humble as she could be and come right in. And now teaching on our faculty. And we're proud to see Brother Boatwright sitting over there, one of the greatest workers ever been in the National Christian Institute. Amen. It's a blessing to see him come in here tonight and to see his children assisting in the best they know how to bring into the service of this God. Do you not know the school meant so much to him that his whole family obeyed the gospel of the Son of God? He taught boys, and sometimes I meet students, GIs, that went to our school. And the first thing they want to know, how is Brother Boatwright? He wouldn't even teach geography and arithmetic to them, but the governor was sending to us. He taught, took the whole time, taught the Bible. But the governor didn't know he was doing all that. But anyway, that's the way he, he, he go to his class, and he was preaching. Instead of telling the boy what to, how to write and speak his English, he, was pre he didn't know nothing but the gospel. He was bubbling over with it. Professor Boatwright, just glad to see him tonight because that's all he had on his mind. Now I'm going to Jesus and use him tonight. You know, one time he was such a powerful physician, Jesus was, that he cured one man, a lady, by the just touching the hem of his gum. Just touch him, and she was made whole. And do you not know he went on Calvary and bought the church of the Lord Jesus Christ with his blood and then made the blood the cleansing power? And then he didn't only make the blood the cleansing power, but he left the directions how to reach the blood. He didn't know to give it to you. He put it in the prescription how you reach the blood. John the 19th chapter and the 34th verse, if my memory is correct, and if it ain't in that chapter and that ain't the right verse, read all of John. <laughs> and, and, and you'll run into it. It's in John somewhere. But nevertheless, Jesus on the cross shed his blood for the remission of the sins of the world. That's what he did, and took that same blood and bought his church, paid for it. And it's the only church in Nashville paid for. These others, the devil has a mortgage on them. <clears throat> and some of these days, he's going to foreclose and take that person that's in a church, not in the Bible, to the place that he belongs. Did you know that Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, when he was on earth, what did he do? 
heal the blind, just spit on the ground and mix up some mud. And do you know the man that let him put that mud in his eyes and spit too had to be a nice fella or he wouldn't have submitted to a, a, a application like that? But he just stood there and he never questioned Christ. What's that? What's that like we'd have meddled with him? He just stood there and let him uh, anoint his eyes. You got to congratulate him. He, he didn't ask, what is that? We start around, how come? And how can water do that? And how? All of that question. Why not do what the prescription says? You know, the doctor don't allow you to question him about his prescriptions today. And the government requires that the doctor write his prescriptions and sign his name on it. What for? In case it hurts you in some way or is illegal, they can track that prescription and prove it to him and send him to the penitentiary. Punish him by law. But you notice when you go to the drugstore, what happens? After you get your prescriptions filled, they don't tie them up and throw them in the fire. They file them away in case something should happen or you might want a refill, fill, come back and it goes to the file. Is that, you don't have to go to the doctor for that prescription no more. If it's that one, he goes to the file and make up another most of medicine out of that same prescription. Did you know the prescription for sin is filed away? That's the reason I like the Bible. It's filed in there in God's Word. And all you got to do, if you don't believe what the Church of Christ teaches, go to your Bible and look up the file. Search the file. That little boy preaching to us tonight, chapter and verse of the file, file's got it in there. Why? Because it's filed away. And Jesus said many other signs. Truly did I, in the presence of my disciples, that are not written this book. But these that are written, they're written that you might believe. That Jesus is a Christ, the Son of the living God, and that believing the written word of God, you might have life. And not only life, have it more abundantly. The Bible is right. I sometimes ask people, where's your doctrine at? And he go and get a discipline. Another will go get a manual. Church of Christ, go and get a Bible. Then he tells us we have to repent. And except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Well, what is repentance, Brother Keeble? Repentance is just simply backing up. Backing up. I use that word so I can make this illustration. So many people today in churches, not in the Bible, but they don't want to back up. You preach the gospel, they're so stubborn, said, I'm a Christian, I know I am. Now, why not back up and examine yourself? What you need to do, see if you're in the church that Jesus bought with his blood. See if you've done the thing that carries you where the cleansing power is. And did you know repentance is not a thing in the world, but backing up? Backing up, get a man with it. Did you know, um, I wouldn't have a horse, I wouldn't have an automobile if it was a Cadillac and the man told me it wouldn't back. Yeah. That thing's full of trouble, ain't it, brother? You run a red light and the cop says, back up, you can't back, you wish you had one. <laughs> you see, you're gonna have to get something you, and, and listen now, when you get so stubborn, some men get so stubborn, they don't want to even apologize for a wrong they do. And his wife stands there sometimes, and you know you mistreat me. Why don't he just so stubborn he don't want to back up? Why not just back up and say, forgive me, I, I'm sorry. That's backing up. Jesus said, except you back up, you shall perish. Repentance is a backing up situation. Did you know that? And unless you learn that, and you won't go into water baptism unless you're willing to back up. Why, somebody sitting here tonight said, I've been baptized. Yes, but if you wasn't baptized for the remission of your sins, you got to back up. Who said so? The physician said to the great physician that died on Calvary and came out of the grave a conquering Christ. With all power, 
in the heavens and the earth given unto him. And he told you, except you repent, I accept you back up, you can't be saved. The Dixie fly that used to go through running a mile a minute, did you know that thing could back up? Make a mile a minute, but if it come necessary, that engineer could back up. One time I remember being at, at down here at Hopkinsville, Kentucky, and a man caught the Dixie flying. He got a ticket on there, and the ticket didn't state that he was to get off at a certain place, and the conductor got down there, and he said, that's uncle, you just sit on here. Your ticket don't put, or put you off, and this train don't stop where this ticket says you want to get off, but you just sit there. Did you know the conductor runs the train? He controls it. So when he got almost to this little stop where this man was to get off, and the ticket didn't say that, but this he put him off there anyhow because that's exactly where he wanted to get off at. And he ran past the stop. Engineer reached up and got the cord. And when he gets that cord and certain signals, he locks every wheel on there. First thing you know, we were sliding. I looked out the window and the fire was flying from the wheels. What was the matter? Stopping him so he could back up. Made him back up three, four miles and put this old man, said, now, uncle, you can get off. I know your ticket didn't say get off here. This train don't stop here, but you must back up. I made him back up because I wanted to put you off so he wouldn't have so far to walk. That's a mighty nice people in the world. Did you know that? Put this old brother off because he had power to do it. And Christ has got power to send you to hell if you don't back up. And hell fire will fly from your wheels. <laughs> you, don't, you don't believe it. You, you don't believe it. Stay where you are. Yeah, talk about I'm not going to turn around. I'm not going to obey that. I'm not going to do it. You back up. Did you know he said the day is going to come when everybody will back up? What did you say? Every knee shall bow. I don't care who your professor, doctor, whoever he is, and how, what big church you're preaching for, if it's not in the Bible, you'll back up someday. Someday you'll back up. And you wish you had it backed up earlier. But my friends, tonight, if there should be one in our midst that have no obeyed the gospel, and you have, may have shouted all over the church, shouting don't make you right. Shouting don't make Christians. You might have rode all day down at the Mona's bench or down at the altar trying to get the Holy Ghost, but unless you get up and then back up, back up and go where? Back into the water if you've ever been there and know what you went in there for. Baptized a man not long ago. He said, Brother Keeble, I thought I was right till you came to town. I thought I was right. When I came out there and heard you, I'd been a deacon in the Baptist church of many, many years. But after I heard you, I was willing to back up. You'll have to do it. You can't be saved in something that Jesus didn't build. No, in his family was saved in the ark that God ordered built. And God ordered the height, the width, and the dimension and all, the nanny said, now, nah, Noah, don't, don't invite him in. Pitch it within and pitch it without so the water won't seep in. And then invite him into the ark. And you know what the story is, don't you? That ark floated on the water. Right. You know it. You know it. I know good and well that all the reason I've baptized over 30 or 40,000 people is just because I may, I went right into the nest where you live at. And the very thing you believed in, I went in there and worked on it and used this prescription and made a many man whole. A many man clean from sin. And a many woman surrendered and gave up what they had and obeyed the great physician. Jesus Christ says, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Come unto me, all ye that labor and the heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. 
The day you hear my voice, harden not your hearts as they did in the provocation and fell in the wilderness three and 20,000. Men need to surrender. Men need to bow. Don't be so stiff-necked. Well, somebody says, my mother died in this church, and I know she went to heaven, but you just don't know where your mother is. Your mother ain't got to heaven yet. Your mother's got to be judged. Nobody going to heaven without going to judgment. Yes, you got to pass right that correct test, right at the judgment. And if you haven't made it just like the prescription says, you might be put on the left-hand side. Yes, you might be put on the left-hand side. But if you followed God's prescription, you'll be put on the right-hand side. And a member of the church was bought with the blood of Jesus. And last night when the invitation was extended, and I told you about a young man talking about me the night before, that was the same young man walked out here last night. Last night I didn't know he was going to come so quick, but I was glad to come. Wonderful young man. One night, the Sunday night, pardon me, I said last night, but Sunday night he walked out on the word of God and was baptized to wash his sins away. And tonight, wherever he is, he's in Christ. He turned around and obeyed the gospel of the Son of God, repented of his sins, and backed up and was baptized to wash his sins away. I want to ask you this question. If the, sin, if the baptism wash the cheap of sinner's sins away, it'll wash yours away tonight. Why not just say, Brother Keeble, I see it. I'm coming to Jesus tonight. I'm denying myself. I'm taking up the cross. I'm willing to live the life that he said live until he comes back. Why not just make it up in your mind? This is the time I'm coming now. Speak to me, O Lord, and thy servant will obey. Why not do that tonight? If there's a woman or a man in the audience have never been baptized to wash your sins away, and never been added to God's church, and never obeyed the gospel of the Son of God, you've got to repent, you've got to back up, and correct the mistakes that you made, and obey the gospel that's filed away in God's eternal word. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. I trust somebody's here, somebody not too stiff-naked to back up, somebody not too t hard-hearted or uh, they won't repent and confess Christ with that mouth of yours and own him before this sinful and adulterous generation. Why not just surrender? Why not deny yourself? Why not turn your back on your mother? I'm so glad I can stand here tonight and tell you that I baptized my own mother right in this building. My mother brought me into the world, but after I learned the gospel, I preached to her so she backed up my own mother right in this building. I had a greater work I've never done in my life. And I baptized, and some of these days she's gone on, but someday if I live faithful unto death and meet her on the other side, we'll talk about that. Oh, yes, I believe we're going to know as we are known. No one another. If we're going crazy when we get to heaven, you couldn't enjoy. Wouldn't have sense enough. <laughs> I'm going to have my right mind when I get up there, and I'm going to know the Savior, and I'm going to meet him. And I'm going to tell him what I've done and how I suffered to preach the gospel for you. And I see many of them up here. I'll be shaking hands with that I brought to Christ, showed them the light, and they backed up and obeyed the gospel. Why not just do it tonight? Why not surrender? When? Now? Jesus said, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Why not come? The spirit in the bride says come, and let whosoever will come take the water of life free. Are you here tonight willing to surrender? Are you willing to bow and go back home a Christian? Come here, sinner, and go back home a Christian. What better thing could you do? Help to save your family, help to save your neighbor, and finally save yourselves.